deal with Fusen's valve uh, where it's problematic um, is illustrated in this case example from this year uh, how to safely cannulate the uh, coronary sinus and you can see here that uh, we have the coronary sinus and when we advance a wire uh, it always ended up in this position and stopped and the fact that the wire stopped in that position and didn't go any further is typical of what happens when a wire goes into Fusen's valve. So you're attempted to reposition the wire for a while using uh, a torque device, but nothing would uh, allow it to be moved into a different position. So we're, we're gradually advancing the vertebral vein selector uh, over the glide wire, anticipating that the glide wire is in the vein selector. Excuse me, the, the glide wire uh, is in the vein of Marshall. So there we are. Once we got it into position, he wanted to confirm where we were. So using the contrast injection system, we gave a little puff of contrast, half a cc, and yep, there we are in the vein of Marshall. So what we'll do is just gradually withdraw the, the vein selector out of the vein of Marshall. And when we get down here to the coronary sinus, which we can see, uh, we just redirect uh, the vein selector um, into the body of the coronary sinus. Now, the typical uh, response at this point is to put the wire back out. But what you'll learn is that with the vein selectors, you can just drive them along gently and you're removing along and the vein selector looks like it pro probably got into um, a target vein. So we'll give a little puff and yep, that's the target vein. So we'll turn bring the vein selector back and then torque it uh, back towards the anterior interventricular vein and then advance up into the anterior interventricular vein. And again, you're doing this carefully and watching the chip to make sure it doesn't bend. And if there's any question, you just give a little puff of contrast to be sure where you are. So once we get the vein, once we get the vein selector positioned um, safely in it, up by the anterior interventricular vein, we'll, pos uh, uh, we'll <clears throat> advance a short taper amplatz wire through the vein selector. And remember the importance of the short taper amplatz wire. We talked about that before. So out comes the short taper amplatz wire. Um, and now we've created a rail. Here's the short taper amplatz wire. Here's the vein selector. Here's the uh, braided core. Here's the sheath. And what we're doing is we're advancing the sheath over the braided core vein selector rail. Now that'll go up uh, into the coronary sinus. And then once we get into the, get everything up and deep in the coronary sinus, we have our amplatz wire in position and we'll just uh, leave it there. So we'll clip the amplatz wire to the drape, uh, do our venogram, and then with the amplatz wire in place, we use the vein selector uh, to engage the branch. And here we're going to use the vein selector to direct the wire into the side branch and then slide the subselector over the vein selector into that side branch so that we can deliver the lead uh, directly into that side branch, which will keep everything more basal. And then that's the results. So I hope you find this useful. Um, again, it does violate some of the things that you've probably been taught about moving a catheter around in the corner, an open lumen catheter around in the coronary sinus. Um, but when you stop and think about it, you do it with an EP catheter all the time and have no idea where you're going. So it uh, is perfectly safe.